It's time to get your checking account to zero with free checking from PenFed. That's zero ATM fees, zero balance requirements, and zero time spent waiting for your paycheck to direct deposit because you can receive it up to two days early. Open your account with just $25 and see how big zero can be. Apply online today at penfed.org slash free checking. Early direct deposit eligibility may vary between pay periods and timing of payers funding. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. What is up, everyone? I'm Jeff Lund, and this is the Mediocre Alaskan Podcast, where we're intolerant of weak-minded attitudes that keep people from pursuing new and exciting things in the areas of fitness, outdoors, and general lifestyle. Just returned from Gravina Island. I was doing a hunt there with a buddy of mine. We took his skiff around, so we're off the road system. And if anybody knows anything about hunting Ketchikan area, the road system on Ravilla is flooded with hunters all the time. There's a lot of, not a lot of access, so a lot of people are in the same spots walking the same little muskeg troop. So people go to Gravina where there's a nice population and trucks everywhere, people everywhere. But they've been getting some nice bucks, so it's crazy. So I, that's kind of been my program. Um, last weekend, whenever they're camped, this weekend, whenever they're camped, and people are getting massive bucks, and I'm not even seeing them. Not even seeing them. I, I I've seen zero bucks on Gravina this year outside of what I saw in August, and so so right now I'm in. I'm kind of looking back at what's going on here. So, um, like I said, I just got back, and and um, buddy Ryan and I we took his uh, his skiff to a different part of the island and walked around for a couple hours in the rain. And then it uh, got kind of kind of nice, and um, he saw some nice rubs and, and two does, and I saw one doe and uh, one nice rub, but a lot of tracks. So it's November fourth, and this is like you know peak rut. You know if 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 Halloween sometimes people think that's the day to be out there because the I guess the daylight hours have a lot to do with rut, maybe even more so than the temperature. I've, I've kind of heard that, and that makes some sense. That's why it's pretty consistent. So the daylight hours and the time, that's going to be more consistent than uh, than weather. So if you look at, at results and, and prime days for rut, then it, it's the amount of daylight. I hadn't heard that, but that makes total sense. So anyway, um, we're out there, nothing. And we're both kind of confounded because – we haven't had any luck outside of, of our alpine seasons. Um, he got one up in the up in the alpine, and I got one up in the alpine on Gravina. And then a couple weeks later, I saw a couple more, but I couldn't make a shot. I could have made the shot, but I wasn't sure I could actually get to the deer, and so I didn't make the shot. So now it's it's not August anymore. <laughs> August flew by. September flies by. October flies by, and you're just looking forward to rut. And now rut is probably in the tapering down it's going to maybe maybe it's at the peak right now and i didn't see anything and people are getting these massive bucks and saying oh yeah you just call and they came running so i mean is that skill is it luck you know what am i doing wrong what am i in the wrong spot is it just merely luck or the people who are saying that you know are they attributing skill when it is just really luck i don't know but all that stuff is going on in my head right now i'm just thinking man this is this is crazy. I don't consider myself an expert hunter whatsoever, but I don't know. I just think I should be able to run a program good enough to to put myself in front of a deer to um, during rut time. Um. So if I, if I think back, I camp Friday night, so I put in a couple hours in the evening, and then hunt all day Saturday, and then hunt it all day today. Last weekend, same program, camp Friday night. And then hunted all day uh, Saturday, and then came back to town. Kind of got my got my wits back about me, dried out, warmed up, and then went out again Sunday. Weekend before, my girlfriend was here, and we hunted three days. Weekend before that, I was in D.C. Weekend before that, I camped, and that's so I'm. I've been going out every weekend. I'm putting hours, just throwing hours at it, and still only have the one buck from. What the third or fourth of August? Crazy. 
I don't feel entitled to a buck because, you know, obviously the deer don't care about how much time I'm putting into it. They don't say, well, we're going to respect you and give you a buck. But, man, I just, I just wonder. I just wonder. Is it? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so, um, but that does lead to, I mean, it's not all bad, obviously. The fact that I can be going out there so much and spending so many times out there is great. It's definitely not the thing I like to focus on. I like to harp on or always remember, but it is nice to be able to have access to that and at least put yourself in an opportunity where you can maybe see a buck. Um, but I've had some, some things that I've added to my program this year uh, that I want to talk about that have been made it, made it pretty cool, technology and products and stuff that I had to pay full price for. So this isn't like a you know, a sponsorship type thing there. But first thing is, is on X hunts i bought the subscription which i wasn't sure that i would do because you don't have to worry so much about where you're hunting in southeast because so much of it is um tongas national forest or state land so you don't have to worry about how you crossed over into someone's private property and you're trying to try trying to hunt there so but I bought it because you can save maps and then you can access them if you don't have cell phone service, but it still allows you the GPS. You can still see where you're at. So if you download a section that you're going to be hunting that has no cell phone service, you can then access it and you can get really good views, which is awesome, of course, because if you're doing a GPS or a Garmin, the maps aren't great. You know, you get, you get topo maps in there, and you can kind of look and follow your way around there, but a topo map isn't going to tell you how, how big this muskeg is, or if this muskeg is, you know, well, it doesn't tell you if it's a muskeg at all, you know, and but you know that if you're looking at a muskeg, how you kind of want to hunt it, and there's a little bit of maybe thin brush between this mug, muskeg and this muskeg, and so you can really plan an effective way of doing that. So the Onyx hunts allows you to, to do that. And that's pretty sweet. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So I got that and it's been fun. Uh, it's been good. It doesn't drain the battery too fast, but it's a good thing to have and you save your spots and, and save the maps and it can track where you're doing and, um, gives you a nice little, um, blue trail of, uh, of how you rolled in the little program you ran. So, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, another thing that was nice today was my scone, stone glacier pack cover for my stone glacier pack that I bought. I love the pack because it's got a top load, or you can zip it all the way down. Got really good hardy zippers, and then the side pouches are awesome. They don't take up space from the main compartment, which is awesome. And I don't really think it matters, my buddy. Uh, well, one of my buddies has um, Kufaru, another buddy has yeah, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of different packs and once you get to that sort of level you, it doesn't really matter what you get whether you're getting a, a Mystery Ranch or a Stone Glacier or a Kufaru, they're all really great packs but the nice thing about the thing that I bought I bought the little, I'm not sure how much it costs but a little tarp that goes over it so as you're walking around you know, it's not getting absolutely soaked it's not a waterproof pack but with the amount of rain that we get up here, just having that little shell over the outside of it, it keeps it dry, man. And that's that's huge. That's awesome. So if you have a camera in there, which I do, you don't have to worry about the pack going to get soaked, which is going to add to the weight. And you have to put everything in the inside there in dry packs because dry bags, otherwise they're going to get soaked too. So you can do that if you want, but having the shell on the outside to protect it's uh it's a pretty nice nice thing there so that's another thing that's been that's been nice to to, to do or uh, to work with um but yeah going forward i think next week next week gonna go out again gonna camp and and see how it goes it's frustrating you know you you don't get to the point of despair but it can be it can be frustrating you see a lot of people getting some really nice bucks, and you know why are you not doing it? You're throwing out hours at it too, so you know I try to be as ninja as possible. I'm trying to, to snake my way around these 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 spots, and I'm trying not just to walk through the musk eggs. I'm trying to figure out you know where the deer would be if they're spooked off the main route, 
um, trying to get back in there where they would be, which a lot of times is a little bit louder. So how am I, I'm paying attention to how I walk and, and trying to be as quiet as possible in those areas and uh, get away from the easy stuff that people do, which maybe that's the problem. Maybe people are just picking up these bucks by just going to the easiest, most accessible spot, and that's where they're getting them. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But you know, trying to be a hunter and think, this spot is a great spot to shoot a deer, but it might not be a great place to find find a deer. So, um, but it's a good challenge. It's it's a fun. Yeah, Why well, I, I can't say fun really right now because I'm frustrated. But after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. For anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. I was hesitant about having to get a new phone and a new phone number, but with Mint, you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone and your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com/waypoint. That is mintmobile.com/waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. It's a, it's a real thing. You know, if you're watching TV, you know, I, I came back from hunting yesterday and after camping, you know, you just smell terrible and you're cold and wet. But you come back and you see that, the, you know, college football happening. I love college football. It's great. I love watching it. But, I mean, there's no question that I'm going to go out hunting or do something else rather than sit at home and watch TV, but it's real, you know? You're not outsourcing your entertainment to a bunch of people who don't care about you. Again, I love Arizona football. I checked out, you know, when I got home, like, okay, how how the Wildcats do? And I'll check that and I'll keep up tabs and I'll, I'll read about the team for sure, but, you know, it's it's like an abstract thing. It's a, it's a convenience or it's a, it's supplementary. You know, the life of work, and the life of being outside and having visceral experiences, that's what it's really about. And not being totally enraptured in a sport team that, you know, can, you know, can let you down and you have no control over it. I sometimes feel like I have no control over hunting because the deer just run away from me or I can't find them for some reason. But, you know, at least I'm out there. There's something that I'm doing. So I really like... And I'm not judging people who like to who just spend their Saturdays and they're loyal fans. That's a that's great. You know, I'm just focused on on what I do and how I want to spend my time. And even though I, if I am misery outside or miserable outside, then that's that's something that I love to do and I'm willing to do it every weekend. So, um, as far as other things, conveniences, you know, I uh, things that make it good. I've I. That's about it. You know, I think having a, a good pack is really important. Good boots. My danners are leaking, so I'm, I'm going to look into getting some new boots. The um, extra tough boots that I've had, the last two pairs have, have blown out pretty quickly, which is unfortunate. So they're like medium toughs now. Um, but I was maybe looking into like, you know, getting a new pair of nice boots, either the like deck boots or, you know, like a changing brands and, and getting a nice new waterproof boot or getting a, a hiking boot type thing so looking into that there's always something you can look up and buy and looking at a new bow um just because the one i have i like but it's kind of entry level and i think I'm, i've shot enough to the point to kind of realize what the difference is it was the same thing when i was looking at my fly fishing rod i bought the 60 dollar kit and then you buy the 60 dollar kit and you realize that there's some better things out there and so you buy the 
best bang for the buck, which is like a $160 rod, like a TFO. And then you start developing a casting style and rhythm, and you start to understand what you want more in uh, in a fly rod. And I'm maybe starting to realize what I want more in a in a bow. So, looking into looking into that. So, if anybody has any recommendations, I've, I've talked to my buddy Ryan about that a little bit, and we were talking about that on the skiff ride out. Um, just upgrading the bow, and it's. It's a hard thing to answer. Uh, I had a student ask me why I bow hunt, and I don't know. It's it's more fun. It's more engaging. I don't know. And then if you do say it's more fun, then it is it about getting meat or is it about fun? Well, it's about getting meat too, but it's it's a different experience, man. It's hard to put words to it. And I know that sounds really bad, but. Know, unless you do it, it's kind of hard to understand. You know, you're out there and you're you're trying to sneak around, and you know you want food, and you're thinking about taking a third of that back strap and seasoning it, and pan searing it, and putting it in the oven or in the on the grill on the, on the Traeger for about 20 minutes, man. And so the inside is just still raw in the middle, but the outside is kind of. S- locked in all the juices man it's hard to beat that and you went out there and you suffered and you got that and you didn't outsource that to anybody else and knowing that bow hunting makes that entire process more difficult so you have to be that much more sneaky and you're not just sending it from 300 yards like i don't know i don't think it's better you know but it's kind of fun it's kind of it's a new thing and i that might exactly be the reason why I don't have a, a, a buck in the freezer and why I'm totally out, but I haven't seen a buck that was outside of bow range, so it's not like I'm seeing bucks from a long way away that I can't shoot because I'm using a bow. And I've gone out with my rifle too. I'm just not seeing bucks. But I think that's a good problem to have. I think if there is to summarize all this stuff here about, about hunting to um, – have a hobby or passion that's something that really gets you involved and that uh, is is active and something that makes you ponder why you do it. Because even if you can't come up with a great answer or the perfect answer for why you do it, you're still going to do it. And I think that's important. Um, last podcast before uh, elections. So speaking of know why you do stuff, Again, a little bit about Prop 1. I think the two most compelling arguments that I didn't mention last week, um, first one was in favor of yes on one and was to pass it to protect the future runs, which makes total sense. So rather than be reactive, rather than wait for something to get destroyed to then try and save it, uh, makes total sense. However, if their salmon populations in southeast Alaska have been diminished, what is it that is diminishing them? And if there isn't a development that you can point to and say, this mine is destroying this return, I can't think of any in southeast Alaska. And so if the salmon populations are down in southeast, I'm not sure it's because of spawning habitat. So saying yes on one under the promise of it going to re- it's going to return salmon if that's not the problem then we're returning something or we're voting on something that's going to increase regulation even if that doesn't solve the problem so that's a little bit wary i heard an ad on the radio that said foreign companies are dumping um, chemicals or there's spills or there's runoff from these mines and then i saw an article in the anchorage daily news about there's a mine that's up in Cal- in uh, in Canada that some of the runoff is getting into the Taku River outside of Juneau. Maybe it's in the Juneau Empire. But that's – if you pass one, that's not going to solve it because passing one does not make British Columbia responsible or accountable for any sort of runoff. So, ah, oh man, I'm still just as con- conflicted as before. I'm pretty sure I know how to vote, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I don't think it's responsible for me as a teacher to reveal who I would vote for. Um, So I don't care if teachers do, but I don't want to tell people who I vote for or why. 
Uh, I want to be as middle as possible, at least understand the argument that way, you know, knowing you can convince yourself both ways and, and to be involved and engaged is to kind of be frustrated, but you know, it's the way it is. So, um, there you go. That's what we got. Episode 65, already 65. So make sure you go to the mediocre Check that out. Check out the fall issue of the Drake magazine. I got an article in there about uh, purpose. Also check out the Alaska Supporting Journal. Check out Sit News. Check out the Juno Empire every other week. Go to the MediocreAlaskan.com. Check out content, other updates, things like that. Uh, again, I was looking for story ideas people to talk to. So if you have uh, hunting stories you want to talk about, let's, uh, let's get them on there. And um, questions, things like that, things I can answer or direct you in the, in the direction of someone who can answer them, let me know. So we'll call it this episode, and we'll talk to you next time.